In this lesson, we're going to use the cross section we drew previously, and we're going to revolve that to make the ring. However, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to turn on record history, and that way, anytime we make any adjustments to the input curve, it's going to update our ring. So let me turn on record history, and I'm going to hit the check mark to have it always record history. So we'll go out to our perspective window here, and we're just going to do a simple revolve. There's my cross section. I'm going to choose Surface, Revolve, and I want to revolve it around our world axis, so I'll type a zero, and then I'll hold down Shift key to constrain myself to the Y axis. So we're constrained in this direction. The revolution angle is by default set to 360, and that's what we want. So we'll go ahead and hit Enter on that, and let's switch that to Shaded View. Hit F7 to switch off the grid so we can see that a little bit better. And you can see the little indents catch the light really nicely. We have a big drop down here. That's fine. We're going to fill that with an inlay in the next few lessons. So go back to shaded mode here. Now with the history enabled, if I click on this curve and I drag it up and down, you'll see that our ring actually updates. So no matter what size ring we need, we can just drag this to the appropriate size and that'll work for us. You go ahead and hit a couple of undos here and get that back to where we were. So the history command is a great command, and it works on a lot more commands in Rhino 5 than it did in the previous versions of Rhino. There are still some commands that will break the history of an object. For instance, fillet edge unfortunately breaks the history of objects. So if I were to do a fillet on an edge here, let's make that a 0.125, and we'll just fillet this edge here. Got my preview set to yes so we can see what we're going to get. As soon as I hit enter and apply that fillet, I get a history warning. And that's because my history warnings are switched on down here. And this tells me that the fillet edge command broke the history on one object. It also tells me how to restore the history. And in order to restore the history, I just have to undo the previous command. So as soon as I undo that, we're back in a history mode. So I can grab this curve and still drag it up and down, have it work. If I apply this command and have it break the history, now if I grab this ring and drag it down, it no longer updates because we've broken the history to the overall ring. I can go back and undo a couple of times and that'll allow history to reset itself. So it can be a little bit finicky, but it is definitely worth keeping. And what you can always do is you can make a copy of a part You can apply the fillets to this part. So we've broken the history on that, but we haven't broken the history on this piece. So as I drag that down, you can see this still updates and changes, but this no longer does because we have broken history. So that's one good way to get around the fact that some of your commands are going to break the history on objects. And that concludes creating the main ring with history. And we'll go ahead and create the inlay in the next lesson.